everyone, my name is Ren, and today I want to talk about something a little bit different uh, from what I usually do, which would be Visual K related uh, content. And um, today I want to talk about something that still relates to Japan, but uh, something else that is one of my hobbies. Um, so actually, for those who might not know, I am actually, and I always have been, a bit of a bookworm. I love reading so much and oftentimes when I would be like on the trains to concerts from Gumo to Tokyo I would always like have a book with me because it's two and a half hours and um like if you're on the train at night you can't really look out the window and um so it's just something that I would do to pass the time and now when I first went to Japan and I was living in Osaka and studying there I did take a Japanese literature class which I found extremely interesting and I got to read so many different authors and I'm so happy that I was able to do that even though it was tough I had to read a novel a week um, and write reports on them they were all translated into English so um, it wasn't as difficult as if it was like in Japanese and I'm reading like shisho setsu like all in Japanese with crazy kanji and yeah that's that's not the case um, so what I really liked about the class is we would be reading a different author pretty much every week and they would be older authors or like from, you know, a long time ago versus uh, more contemporary stuff. And I really, really enjoyed that class. And it wasn't stuff that you would expect, like a lot of like Murakami Haruki or like the Tale of Genji, because obviously if you're someone who is doing something like Asian studies or like what I did, uh, linguistics, um, with a little bit of a minor in Japanese, uh, those were stories that you would already read, like Norwegian Wood and the Tale of Genji and um, things like that. Uh, so you would cover stuff like that in the history classes or other literature classes. So we did read some books that were a little bit off the beaten path. And um, so today I want to discuss uh, five Japanese authors who are not Haruki Murakami. <laughs> Um, not that Haruki Murakami is a bad author, obviously. Uh, he is an author who, I mean, clearly his writing has touched many, many a uh, reader, both in many different languages. And as far as I know, I'm pretty sure he translates his own work from Japanese to English. He's very influential um, as an author in Japan. And so I do want to introduce you to five authors who are not Haruki Murakami. Um, because, you know, when I was living in Japan, I really made it a point to only read Japanese authors because they were available. So you can go to a bookstore, really anywhere. I could go to a bookstore in Guma and I could find um, Japanese novels that had been translated into English. Um, you can go to like a book off or a Tower Records or um, any kind of bookstore in a major city and they will have English versions of um books written by Japanese authors. So uh, this is just a little something that I want to introduce you to if you haven't already explored the wonderful world of Japanese authors. Um, now I am going to say I'm into a very specific kind of genre. I like darker books, um, not really like super grotesque, but uh, kind of that face of reality of urban life. And I like mystery and suspense and um, things that play a little bit with darker themes and one thing that I notice with Japanese authors is they're very often times not afraid to touch on those darker themes and um, it creates very interesting uh, literature in that way. So the first author that I want to mention today is Hitomi Kanehara. Now Hitomi Kanehara wrote the very influential book called Snakes and Earrings. And this is a book that I feel like a lot of people have read, especially if you're into the kind of things that I am with the kind of music scene that I'm in or Tokyo urban life um, and just alternative body modifications and things like that. I'm pretty sure that if you're into that, you've heard of or read this book. It's called Snakes and Earrings. Um, this was like my first foray into my own Japanese literature. Um, this was not a book that I read in my class and not an author that I would read in my class, but it was a very, very good book. Very good. Not for people, I would say, under the age of, like, 16. Um, it does get a little graphic. Uh, you are dealing with things like tattoos and body modification and some, um, some sexual themes in there. So I would say not for people under 16, um, even 18. 
uh, at some points, but yeah. Uh, they've also made a movie out of it. It's pretty good, but I would recommend reading this author, uh, this book in particular. It's very good, a uh, very influential book, especially for people that are into the kind of things that I'm into, uh, which is alternative fashion, body modification, things like that. So the next author I want to mention, I don't actually have a physical copy of uh, her book with me. Uh, and that is because when I left Japan, books are very heavy to put into boxes that you have to ship across the ocean. So I ended up giving away quite a lot of my books. So um, maybe I'll put up a picture of it if I can find it. But the author's name is Natsuo Kirino. And she wrote an amazing book called Out, which uh, is... And still, it still is one of the craziest books that I think I've read. Um, it is, there's an interesting cast of characters in it. Um, if you read the back cover, I can give a quick synopsis, but <laughs> a bunch of women work at night at a bento making factory where they make like kumbini bentos. And one of the women murders her husband. And a bunch of women that work at night making convenience store food come together to try to help her hide the body. And um, somebody tries to figure out the secret. It's very good. It has a very interesting cast of characters. Um, there is one character who actually is a foreigner that I think was a little bit oversimplified. I feel like he could have been a little bit, he could have been written a little bit better, a little less simple, I suppose. Um, so I would recommend Natsuo Kirino, specifically the book Out. It's very good, very interesting. Again, dark themes. Uh, there are some sexual themes, so. Again, I would recommend, you know, no one under 16, I might even raise that to 17 or 18, um, just like at the very end of the book. But again, very, very good author. Um, I totally recommend. The next author that I want to mention is one who, her books are just very easy for me to just pick up and read in a day. And that is Yoko Ogawa. Her books generally are no bigger than maybe like two, 300 pages. Um, very, very easy to read uh, as far as, like, you'll get through them very quickly. And um, I like her writing style um, in a lot of these books. Again, uh, some of these books might not be for kids. If you're going with suspense, grotesque, not really horror, but things of that nature, you are going to need someone that is at least over 16, 17, or 18, uh, depending on your maturity level. Uh, to read them. So I have a few books by her, but the ones I most recently read were Hotel Iris. This one definitely, definitely, definitely like 18 plus. <laughs> um, I would say very interesting book, very quick read. I got through it in a day. Uh, very good. And then this one specifically, I really liked Revenge. So I do recommend Yoko Ogawa. I like her books. They're quick reads, they're interesting reads, and um, definitely something that I can read like on the train. It's small enough to fit my purse and just a very, very good author. I have a whole bunch of her books, but these are the two that I most recently read. Uh, all right. So the next author that I want to introduce is one that I feel like a lot of people might know. Uh, this is Ryu Murakami. So a lot of people call him the other Murakami. And um, he writes some very, very... <laughs> interesting, extremely suspenseful stories. They're so good, but the one that probably is my favorite one, the most like shocking, like it gets my heart palpitating as I'm reading it, was Quinn Locker Babies. Um, it's weird, it's intense, it's, it just, it keeps you, even the first line of the book, if you ever read it, is like, what the hell am I about to read? It, this one was actually one that was assigned in my literature class, and um, I ended up just speeding through it, and I never actually finished it because uh, <laughs> I spent too much time going to concerts to finish this book. Um, and after the end of the semester, we had to give away our copies of the book because they weren't legal copies. <laughs> so I never got to finish it. So I went to Tower Records uh, when I was still living in Guma, and um, I picked this one up. And I just recently finished it. And it is, it's crazy. Like, absolute bonkers. Like, the synopsis is these two boys, they are like brothers. Um, and they were abducted together. And the thing that brings them both together is the fact that as babies, they were left in coin lockers by their mothers. So they don't know who their parents are. And they grow up in this orphanage, and then they end up getting adopted and moving down to, like, an island town. 
uh, one of the kids, he grows up and he wants to be an athlete, and then the other one grows up to be a musician. And just the way that their lives unfold is insane. One of the boys falls in love with a girl who has a pet alligator. <laughs> so it is, it's an insane, insane book. But it is so good in, like, the weirdest way. Like, I... I don't know, like, I should not be, I should not like this book so much considering the disturbing things that they have, but there's something about the way that it's written that just, it's so grotesque that you're fascinated by it, you know? So you just will keep reading it because you want to know how can this get even more fucked up? And then it gets incredibly more fucked up. So, um, yeah, I definitely recommend Murakami Ryu. All of, his, or all of his books are very, very good, very, very well written. He's like the alternative Murakami Haruki. <laughs> and I don't like to say that because like he is his own author just because they have the same last name. But really, you have to read this book if you're into like grotesque, like suspense, almost like it's not objectively like obviously horror, but some of the stories of the people that you read about are horrific. So, really, pick it up. It's so crazy how this story starts with, like, two babies that were left by their parents in coin lockers and just how insane everything becomes afterwards. Really, do yourself a favor. Read any of Murakami Ryu's uh, stories, but Coin Locker Babies is definitely a very, very good one as well. All right, and the last author that I want to mention, and maybe my favorite on this list, maybe, is Keigo Higashino, or Higashino Keigo. So, um, this is not an author that I read in my literature class, but it is one, or he is one, who I found on my own when I was, actually this is the first book I ever read by Higashino Keigo, and it's called Journey Under the Midnight Sun in English. It is, once again, <laughs> insane, and just very, very interesting read. Again, it starts with these two kids um, in Osaka who don't seem to have anything in common, you know, there's, an, but as they grow up, you know that there's something, you know, going on with those two. And um, it's just, it's interesting. And again, it's just a wild ride from start to finish where you're just like, how do these two kids how do those these two people what is their connection what are they doing because you at in the story you very rarely ever see them together but you know that they have something going on um and the whole time you're trying to figure it out like what does this have to do with the man who was found dead in the <laughs> this is this happens in the beginning i'm not spoiling anything but like what does this have to do with the man who was found dead in the warehouse or the factory or whatever it is and you know how do these two characters connect? It was very, very good. I read this one through very, very quickly. Um, so yeah, this is definitely a book that I recommend. Um, again, I didn't say this for the last book, but these two books that I just recently mentioned, again, I would say no one under 16 should read them. Even extend that up to 18. Uh, a very mature 16 year old, but on average like 18, I would say, uh, should not be reading these books. But yeah, I feel like Higashi no Keigo is a master at writing suspense novels, and um, you might have heard of him if you're a fan of Japanese literature. He is everywhere, very, very famous uh, author in Japan. Um, so, very, very good. I definitely recommend this is a good one to start with as far as Higashi no Keigo's writing goes. Um, very interesting, very suspenseful, and um, definitely one that you should pick up. So. Yeah, so those are five Japanese authors who are not Murakami Haruki. <laughs> um, I do want to talk a little bit more about books in the future, maybe get a little bit more specific um, with my taste in specifically Japanese literature, do some more intense book breakdowns, and maybe I'll even make a video of books by um, Murakami Haruki that I actually like. <laughs> so anyway, those are five authors that I think that if you're interested in reading, book or stories by Japanese authors you should try out. Um, not really suitable for every audience member, I would say. You know, maybe depends. You should more for a mature audience, uh, I would say. But yeah, if you have any favorite books by Japanese authors, put them down in the comments below. Um, I can talk about really, I'm willing to talk about any kind of Japanese literature. I've read quite a few 
older authors and newer authors. So, you know, totally whatever you want, I might have read it. You know, Oze, Tanazaki, <laughs> like all of these not so modern authors, you know, I've read them. So if you want to talk about them down below, let me know. But anyway, this is a little different for me as far as my content, but let's see how this goes. So anyway, until next time, bye bye.